Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hornet King channel for yet another yellow jacket nest removal. This uh, colony of yellow jackets made their nest in a walk-in closet uh, in the ceiling and the customer started noticing some chewing and scratching sounds and uh, noticed there were tiny little holes in the drywall in the ceiling and um, so she put this piece of wood over top of there until an exterminator could come and take a look. Um, Orkin had been out and they basically just told her that they really couldn't do anything so they got a hold of me and um, so I came out to investigate to find out what they had and uh, so this is uh, the first exploratory measure I take just kind of popping off this piece of wood that the homeowner put in place she caulked it she did not want anything coming into her closet anymore uh, she was finding some adults that were flying around the uh, the closet space so after taking that piece off there was significant damage to the drywall and there clearly was a nest just just above the drywall they were excavating a significant amount of that out some of those spots were just paper and like paint paint was like the only thing holding the like that ceiling um, uh, ceiling finish on like there was really no like cement board behind it there were, well so as you can see it's a pretty decent sized nest um, this was a German yellow jacket nest, and uh, so first things first. I mean, these aren't super aggressive. But, um, they're really not like, like say, eastern yellow jackets or southern or western, where you you just breathe heavy on them and they they start swarming. Like these guys are kind of a little bit more docile. Um, I mean, you can kind of get right up in their business, and they will come out, but they kind of like act like European hornets. Like they kind of float around you and they'll dive bomb you, but they don't really. Um, they don't latch on like an eastern yellow jacket will. So you won't see these guys swarm as much per se. Um, but they do, I mean, they do come out and they will sting you. Don't get me wrong. Um, every now and then you'll find them. I'll get them on my gloves and one will be trying to sting my glove and get its stinger like lodged in the leather and uh, can't get out until I suck it off with the vacuum. Um, so I was just kind of doing some... Uh, some damage control as far as adults were concerned, just sucking up as many of those adults as I could that were exposing themselves, and then uh, then I would be cutting back some more of the drywall. What I didn't want to have happen was cut off a bunch of drywall and then expose a bunch of adults and have them all fly out of the nest. And I mean, it's a pretty big walk-in closet, bunch of clothes. I didn't want them getting like lodged in clothes, and the homeowner would have to deal with sucking up um, dead adults days later. So. There was a lot of larva in this nest. I mean, this was this nest had uh, grown exponentially over the last the course of the the season, and um, they were they were pretty busy. There was a there were a lot of cap cells. Even when I was taking this off, I had sucked up all the adults um, off the nest, and you could still see them hatching. Like every like ten minutes, there'd be a new or a couple new adults. So this uh, particular species really doesn't make a very uniform nest. Like if you look at bald-faced hornet nests, which is an aerial nest building yellow jacket, um, they make a very round, like flat pancake round shaped nest. And it's very uniform and um, symmetrical. Then they'll, they'll build like circle after circle of comb. These guys, this type of yellow jacket, which is like a cavity building yellow jacket, they build just kind of haphazard just however the space allows them they just kind of just build and build and build and however it works out it works out so um, you'll see that there's layers of comb but they're not like neatly stacked like like the um, aerial nest building yellow jackets like the um, Dilica Vespula maculata which is the bald faced hornet aka yellow jacket or um, the aerial nest building yellow jacket the um, Dilica Vespula arenaria which are the ones that I've relocated in several other videos. Um, they build very uniform nests. Um, even like the European Hornet, like they don't make a very uniform nest. Like I mean, it's more uniform than this, but um, the layers really on this kind of this species just are very just haphazard and um, just kind of however they felt like building it that day, which is pretty funny and pretty wild. So it's neat to kind of open these kind up because it's really, every nest is so different. Like bald faced hornet, when you open up the nest, they all look kind of the same. Um, there's some little nuances depending on where they build the nest, like if they build it on a building or 
on a tree branch, however. Um, but these guys, they pretty much just, I mean, each nest you open up, like it's significantly different from one to the other. Again, just however the workers are building it. There's such large numbers in here too. I mean, just to be so collective in how they build, it would be virtually impossible. Um, in a nest like this, there was probably close to a thousand, as opposed to like a bald-faced hornet, which, you know, even at the end of the season, we're talking like five or six hundred for them. Um, some studies will say, and literature says that bald-faced hornets have about three hundred to to five hundred, but I've counted personally counted more than that. So, and that was even like mid to late season, but not full season. So. So as you can see, these comb are pretty packed with um, a lot of larvae, a lot of cap cells. So this was going to be one huge nest by the end of the Mary. season. So the homeowner wanted to kind of see it when I was opening it up, so I called her back into the into the uh, closet so she could check it out. Um, she was really excited to get a picture. I mean, it's one of those things that nobody wants to have them in their house, but I mean, if you're going to have to have it removed, you might as well see it, <laughs> see, the, see the damage as it's there. So uh, she ended up coming back in and snapping a couple pictures. Again, one nice thing about this species of not being super aggressive, she could come in and not worry about getting stung. It's kind of docile when it comes to like swarming. They don't swarm as much. Jeez. Oh my God, it's like right there. Mm -hmm. And it goes back too, so, and it goes up, so. <laughs> Get a quick one. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Alrighty, I'm gonna keep going at it. It's still filming, so you'll get a good video of it coming down, so. Actually, would you mind hand me my cell phone? It's there. Yeah. I have a good flashlight on that. Thank you. She's pretty happy to get a nice picture of it. She's, I think she's probably waiting for this video. I did this, uh, I think, about two weeks ago and uh, been meaning to get the visit this video up and I'm just like I'm just bombarded with so much footage and so many different removals that haven't been able to get them all out yet so she'll be excited to see this one's up I'm not sure how that shot's gonna look in the final render but it looks kinda shoddy here for some reason I'm not sure what happened with the focus on it but this one looks good though so just a little bit more damage control because I'm going to start pulling the comb apart and there's going to be adults in between the layers. So just having the vacuum ready just to get the, um, the amount of numbers that are going to be standing on the back of the comb. So people often ask why when I am handling these comb why there's adults that are crawling around on it but they're not flying out and sometimes I don't have my suit on and, and they're not attacking me or when I'm plucking larva. The new adults that come out that hatch, they pretty much right away they go to the larva, get a little bit of sustenance, but then they climb up to the back of the comb and just rest and dry out their wings. Um, and even their bodies are still a little bit soft. So they, they kind of come out and they just dry out virtually. And um, so they're not flying yet. They don't Their wings aren't ready to be used yet. They're still soft and still damp. Um, and you'll kind of see them like when they come out, they stretch and they flutter their wings a little bit, just kind of getting them used to being open. Mind you, they've been cramped in that cell, going through a metamorphosis state, and come out. You know, they don't just come out and just start flying. So, um, so when I pull these comb apart, a lot of the adults that are on them are pretty new adults. They might be like, you know, some of them might have been standing up there for a day. Some of them might have been up there for two days, ready to fly, but just haven't yet. So um, you'll notice even too, if once it do fly off, they might be a little bit clumsy because this is like their first real flight. And uh, so this is like, like their maiden voyage. So, um, but anyhow, when I pull the comb apart, you, or like the layers apart, you'll start to notice that there's a significant amount of adults in between the layers. And, uh, and so they just need to be sucked up as I'm doing it. Sometimes I'll just take the comb apart and just lay them right down in the Rubbermaid bin and just deal with the adults later. But um, depending on, like this, these kind of nests, they usually have a large amount of adults. So it's good to just kind of suck them up because by the time I get home, there's going to be like 50 
because there'll be new ones hatching and things, and that's just more adults to have to suck up. So it's just better just to get them while, while it's hanging up there. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now, just sucking up the ones that are in between those um, those uh, paper envelope chasms and nooks and crannies. And interestingly enough about this uh, particular nest is that they didn't start high and like up against the, the, um, the plywood in the attic or anything and work their way down. They literally like hooked this comb, well the queen when she started, founding queen, started building the nest directly onto the insulation paper. So she really only had like an inch and a half of space from the top, from the bottom of the paper down to the drywall, top of the drywall. So when she when they started growing the nest out, they kind of started expanding outward as opposed to down because there really wasn't much room. So when the homeowner started hearing the chewing, the scratching was because then they were kind of hit in that moment, like, oh, okay, we got to start building downward. So they started what they thought was excavating uh, the space, which was just chewing on drywall, and eventually would have just been opened up into a into a room. So if they were given the opportunity to keep chewing, um, they would chew out the space on the drywall and they would just continue growing their nest downward. And at that point they would start building envelope, almost like a um, bald faced hornet. They would start building an envelope around the comb because these species, the reason why they build inside cavities is they build in the dark. They don't have flashlights in there everybody, they're, they're building these, these comb and things in pitch black. So that's how they build. They don't. They don't actually don't like to have light where their comb is. So that's another reason why bald-faced hornets build the paper around their nest is because they like it dark. Um, and anywhere where there's light coming in, they would they'll, they'll fill it in with envelope. So if they cut out this drywall and started building the comb downward into the room, the bottom of that comb would be covered in an envelope just to keep the nest or the comb fully blocked away from the light. So what I was trying to do here is just find the area where they were coming in from outside, which was pretty much straight ahead from where I'm facing. And uh, so I, I did just kind of spray a little bit of uh, black flag in there just to kind of hit any adults that were on their way back in, get that on them, or deter them from coming in in the first place. And then they would just fly away and and uh, eventually they would die out and, out and outside. Still using my phone, my cell phone as a flashlight, but I'm being sponsored by Olight um, coming up here soon, and I'll be reviewing one of their flashlights. I'm pretty excited by that. That's what the inside of the vacuum looks like. There's quite a few dead adults in there. So a lot of the comments I get are people saying about there being a bag of live hornets, but they're dead. He's drown in the soapy water. And what video isn't complete without seeing my girlfriends chewing up some of the larvae that I plucked out for them. Alright everybody, thanks so much for checking out this removal video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop in the comments, let me know what you think. Um, if you haven't been here before and this is your first time, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate you guys coming back and checking out my new videos in the future and checking out some of my older videos as well. I have new content coming out all the time. Um, if you guys have already subscribed and you're one of my loyal viewers that are coming back all the time, thanks so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video.